you know, the best bet on a movie being good is working with a good director. And so Adrian was someone I wanted to work with, reached out to me, sent me this script, just said it, it heard it was based on a novel by Patricia Highsmith. I read the novel and the adaptation, and it was, you know, really interesting and a really interesting, dark, provocative exploration of a side of the human mind that um, we don't often see explored. It's one of the things that's really interesting about Adrian. He's a brave filmmaker, <clears throat> and he's interested in sort of the part of it's like, you know, he's interested in the human sexuality, he's interested in the psychology of human beings and the, the way we present ourselves versus uh, sometimes who people really are, what they really want, and putting those things next to each other. And all his movies are this fatal attraction or a decent proposal. I mean, you see that same tension, you know, she's gonna, you know, sleep with my wife for a million dollars. Like, if these one of these provocative dinner tables, sort of, would you ever agree to this thing? And he puts it in practice. And in this case, it's it's really a movie about, um, you know, on some level about like, you know, jealousy and ways in which it fuels relationships and ways in which it destroys them. Um, and it's about like, what is the nature of a happy relationship, a real loving relationship? How dark do you go? If you go down certain roads, you know, you kind of can't turn back. And uh, I thought that was fascinating. And I got the script and I loved it and I signed on with him. And uh, Arnon Milshan, who's, who uh, produced the movie at Regency, is a guy I've known for a long, long time and did Gone Girl with. And so I was very excited. Yeah, there's an interesting theme in the movie <clears throat> that seemed to me to suggest that marriages kind of have inherent bargains or contracts that are made between partners, sort of you can do this and I get this and this is what I get out of it and that there's a kind of symbiotic relationship that exists on some level and uh, you know we've all heard of extreme stories where there are people who have open marriage maybe that's not even extreme you know just we have an open marriage or we have a um, you know in this marriage you know our, our rules are like you know the wife works the husband stays home he takes care of the house, whatever it may be and um, that's a healthy good thing right if you can find a balance hey this works for me this works for you and you're upfront about it uh, I think that's great. Uh, this this is um, an example of a kind of contract that's an unspoken contract in a marriage. The sort of arrangements that happen that the couples are afraid to really say out loud to one another, and so they sort of begin to exist these parallel realities. What they say to each other, the married couple, and what really the exchange is beneath the surface, and that is dangerous because it, it, the deals are unspoken that one party can ask for and pull for more and maybe they're pulling on something that is simultaneously something that one of the others wants but is afraid of or wants but is also creating something really dangerous and unhealthy in them. And in this case, I think the theme, a part of it is about how um, this couple goes down this road uh, in order to sort of fix and solve their marriage, they start to play with fire. Um, and eventually, you know, get burned. And one of the nice things I like about Adrian and his movies is that, uh, I love this, is like there's no simple answer. They don't look it up and go, he want this, you want that. This is the answer, here's, you know, the movie goes A, B, C, and it's all neatly tied up. The characters are complicated. They're not totally self-aware, and the, odd, the movie doesn't try to explain everything. It just sort of presents this vision of, of, of a marriage, a part of a story of this marriage, that and sort of draws you in because you kind of go, yeah, I can see why he would do that, then I can see why he would do that, then I can see why he would do that, and finds this character, both of these characters, in very different, extreme, dramatic situations by the end based on their choices, which are hopefully, I think, you know, at least in my sense, grounded in, in something that you could identify with and understand. And, it's, um, that is his, the way he, that's why Adrian's on a tour. Adrian kind of has a vision of humanity, has a way of exploring it. He does challenge gender roles. In some ways he goes more extreme in the direction of stereotypes. In some ways he goes more extreme in subverting the stereotypes. Um, because what he really seems to want to do is sort of like take a poker at the underbelly of, of who people really are kind of you know, in the id. You know what I mean? Rather than the superego that just sort of manages and controls us. Vic is a guy who is a, a sort of got the mind of an engineer. Uh, so he's the people I know like that are a little. They they tend to be sort of black and white, technically focused, a little bit more separated emotionally, more cerebral, a little more distanced from their emotions. 
and I sort of thought of him as like really rooted in the front brain and not at all in touch with like how he felt at all. So his, sometimes his actions would be foreign to him and his reactions surprising to him and not what he expected or wanted or even surprised to feel anything at all. And I know people like this and I did a lot of reading and studying about like there is a kind of personality which is very separated from and very distant and kind of a classic sort of I don't even, I mean, there are all kinds of diagnoses and pathologies, but really it's about somebody who thinks he's very intelligent and technical and specific and focused on certain things like his snail collection and the technology he's developed and his interests and not able at all to have emotional intelligence so that he can communicate with his wife, even though he's highly intelligent in a different way. And I think it's interesting to play a character who's really unintelligent emotionally and very intelligent intellectually that's the fact the sort of dialectic the reality that that dialectic can exist they start off being these people that we we sort of understand as relatively okay he's this guy he retired he's got a lot of money death is beautiful wife she's a little bit bored he's emotionally inaccessible they're they have a kid they're trying to have this marriage and make it work and they've hit this kind of patch that's hard and then the movie just digs deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and the things you discover about them are not always uh, great you know but it, it, they do reflect uh, i think a realistic look at one possibility of where human relationships can go